where just uh, this week we had Iran's new foreign minister uh, or the spokesperson saying that Tehran will definitely re-enter indirect negotiations, the Todd's in Vienna, uh, with the U.S. to revive the Iran nuclear deal uh, and didn't set a specific date. But currently, the talks have been on hold since June 20th. Now, the reason for this is Iran, kind of like the United States, has a process where they elect a president, but then the current president has lamed up for a little bit, and then the new president comes in and starts putting together their cabinet and everything like that. And so I think the Iranians just had their new foreign minister uh, put in place pretty recently, and the new administration is still uh, taking hold. There's a really good article uh, by Mohammed Sahimi that we uh, ran at antiwar.com. I really recommend checking that out, where he breaks down the the uh, Iranian government a little bit and does say that the people in the foreign ministry do have experience at negotiating and dealing with Americans. And so this was potentially a bright light in the Iranian administration uh, that they were going to be able to work with the, the U.S. Now, we have this statement um, but the Iranians also said that they're not going to come back to talks because of pressure from the U.S. And just last week, we had the U.S. add sanctions uh, to Iran. And so even if it's just a public perception thing where the Iranians don't want to appear being forced back to the uh, Vienna talks by additional U.S. sanctions, because if that's the lesson that the U.S. learns, they're just going to sanction Iran forever. Uh, this could stall how, you know, when talks actually take place. Now, this is important because the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, says the U.S. is getting closer to giving up on the Iran nuclear deal uh, from Dave DeCamp at Antiwar.com. He writes, in Germany, Secretary of State Antony Blinken warned the U.S. is getting closer to giving up on the Iran nuclear deal known as the JCPOA. I'm not going to put a date on it, Blinken said. But we are getting closer to the point at which a strict return to compliance with the JCPOA does not reproduce benefits that the original agreement achieved. Blinken's comments came a day after the International Atomic Energy uh, Agency falsely claimed that Iran's very small nuclear stockpile is 60% and rich uranium is rapidly growing. So I'll get into the uh, IAEA statement in a minute, but to uh, stay focused for a second here on uh, Blinken's statement and just talk about how disturbing this is, where he says that, you know, we're getting closer to that point, but won't put a day on the table uh, if the U.S. is going to continue any kind and provocative actions or let's say Israel now sees that there is a you know end date and if they could somehow drag out the the uh, hostilities between the U.S. and Tehran uh, by carrying out maybe some kind of assassination within Iran, then they can make it so the Iranians won't enter negotiations for another month. And by that time, the U.S. will have decided that they're not going to negotiate at all. Uh, I, I think that's a real, real risk that we face right here with this uh, Blinken statement and also just how uh, misunderstanding of the agreement he is saying that it's not going to per, uh, reproduce the original benefits if Iran returns to compliance with the agreement because the agreement, no matter what, does prevent Iran from building a nuclear bomb and has a uh, IAEA uh, inspection team there to make sure whatever Iran is doing with their nu nuclear program is going to be reported and monitored. And so Blinken seeing that there's, you know, maybe going to be less benefits by getting into the deal in the future uh, makes me think he's already calculating that the benefits are, are already on the decline. And so, you know, at this point, the State Department may not even be that interested, unfortunately, in negotiating with the Iranians on getting back into the deal. All right, so uh, to talk real quickly about Israel, because we had a statement from uh, the Israeli Defense Forces Chief of Staff uh, told a Senate interview on Monday that plans to in attack Iran have been greatly accelerated. And so if this is the case, uh, you could have, you know, really two issues here. One, Iran interprets it as a threat. And if they do that, then, you know, they're not going to want to negotiate with the U.S. That's what they're saying publicly, that they're not going to be intimidated into negotiations. Uh, or number two, Israel is really moving forward and looking to carry out some kind of attack in Iran in the near future. 
And if that is the case, it'll likely, uh, you know, extend the amount of time that the Iranians are unwilling to negotiate uh, for several weeks, if not months. And that, again, could back us up past the time uh, that the U.S. is uh, willing to talk with the Iranians. Recently, uh, we had reports from the IAEA that there are equipment on the outside of one of Iran's nuclear facilities outside of Tehran was damaged. This was in a Israeli attack on the building, uh, likely hit with a drone. Uh, Iran had initially downplayed it, but rather did admit and said that it was Israel uh, that had carried out a drone that hit this building. One of the IAEA cameras were destroyed and another one was badly damaged in in the attack. All right, now let's get into the false claims by the IAEA, which again is the UN uh, watchdog group for nuclear weapons. Uh, there has been a change in the leadership of the IAEA uh, in recent years that I had thought may make the organization more susceptible uh, to producing U.S. and Israeli propaganda. And I think this is one of the cases where they say that Iran's stockpile of 60% uranium is rapidly growing, when in reality it has grown from a very, very, very tiny amount to only a very tiny amount. Uh, the estimated stockpile today is only at 10 uh, kilograms. They only started producing this in May, and Iran is only producing this. Uh, they may actually dilute it back down into uh, a lower level enriched uranium because they really can't use it but they're only doing this because of the asymmetrical economic warfare assassinations uh and sabotage attacks by the u.s and israel in iran that you know they're they're doing this to say like hey you know we could enrich your our uranium uh to a higher percentage to show you that that we can and to be provocative and to do something in response and uh, that, you know, that's kind of the situation, but it's certainly not a rapidly uh, growing stockpile. And even if that stockpile uh, does grow a little bit more, it's not like it's um, exactly capable of being made into nuclear weapons as is.